Hello World Wide Web, welcome to Hanging With, I'm GW Pometer, thanks for tuning in and logging on. If you haven't already, please go ahead down there and hit subscribe for us. If this is your first time, thanks for hanging with us. We are here this weekend hanging at Recon 2016, hosted by the Historical Miniature Gaming Society, who are celebrating their 20th anniversary <laughs> here at the International Palms Resort in uh, International Drive in Orlando, Florida, and we are hanging with Ken Cliff, That's right. yeah. the proprietor and gamer uh, responsible for All the King's Men, That's correct. Uh, which is a historic miniatures game. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's kind of jump right in. Let's first about let's talk all the king's men. Okay. What's the premise behind this game? What's the object? What are the objectives? Sure. Tell us about all, all the king's men. Well, it's a company I started because as a kid I enjoyed toy soldiers, mm -hmm. and uh, as I grew up and became an adult kid, whatever you want to say, uh, I never gave up on the hobby. Um, I tried it in different scales and uh, didn't enjoy the small minutia level type game. Uh -huh. So I went back to my roots and made the big toy soldiers, 54 millimeters, 132nd scale. Wow. To find that electricity again that you had as a kid. Well, now we talked earlier to some of the, the gamers and game designers, and a lot of the game designers, the, the, the really the miniatures, wildly impressive. Oh, yeah. Some of the paint jobs and everything. But I, we were talking about uh, the fact that, you know, but the templates for those, the, just the plain Figure, silver figures right. are you know bought in mass and then sent out and then they hand paint them and what they do. Um, yours are a different scale and a different size. Mm -hmm. So do you have to have those made special or is it something you do or no. is it? It's actually something I do. It I, is something you do. I have a so workshop. you make your figures. I am a toy maker. You I are a toy maker so, yeah. in addition to which in and of itself is is wow cool. Yeah. I, yeah. You know I am fascinated by the level of detail in that whole room to start with. But um, the idea of, of not only creating a game in a scenario, but having the hands to create the materials. Sure, sure. That's yeah. pretty That's pretty amazing. What, what medium do you use to create your figures? Well, it's almost literally alchemy in a way. I mean, it, it's science and art. Um, there's a, a physics involved in melting Metal. I was going to say, do you use molten metal or do you mm -hmm. machine it? How do you? It's molten metal. You pour it in a centrifugal spin caster machine. Okay. And the hot metal goes down a funnel into a mold and broadcasts the metal inside that mold. And you let it cool for a few moments and then open it up and you've got six, eight, twelve individual pieces waiting to be. Mm -hmm. Now, those are rough pieces. They're and, and, pretty, and they, complete. They're pretty I, complete. I've never worked with metal, but I've known some guys that did, and mm -hmm. that's there's still a lot of work to do on that to get them. Absolutely, yeah. That is the product people will buy, but then they paint them, like prime Sand them, them and do all the yeah. preparation for them. And but it's now, really on their do end. Pl I was gonna, do your players do all of that work, or is that something that you enjoy doing also? I also do it, and I okay. do it commercially for some folks. So I have a really? painting, painting service as well. Okay, so game creator, mm -hmm. uh, pieces uh, maker, which is essentially a toy maker, Yes. And as a hobby, you also do uh, preparing the pieces. That's right. And professionally, you paint and prepare the pieces. I guess if you define professional as making money at it, yes. But <laughs> after that is fairly Don't fun. define it that way, because then I'm not a professional <laughs> journalist anymore. Uh, okay. My bad. <laughs> you do it because you want to try to make some money yes. someday. How's that? Yes. That's professional. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you just kind of... Uh, uh, within this community, jack of all trades, you're really doing it all. Um, in developing all the King's Men, um, it, it, what is the scenario of the game? Uh, well, well, let's, let's look at the game you're playing tonight. Right. What have you created here? It is uh, pretty much all the games that I do are set in the, what is called the horse and musket period, which okay. is like the American Revolution is a good example. Okay. And that's what we'll be doing tonight. Uh, so uh, it's the British against the Colonials or Continentals, uh -huh. and the people here at this show have been very good to me and very supportive, and we were playing tonight what we call the big game, and I invite everybody to get their collections together, mm -hmm. and we all come down, put them on this gigantic table we're setting up, and we have a 30-foot long war game, which is did crazy you, big. Did you pick a particular battle, or are, are you recreating no. something that existed, or are, this right. a, or are you uh, more along the lines of creating a new battle? It is more or less fiction. Okay. Yeah. It, Historical most, fiction with 
you know, you yeah, know. it's really just. Uh, an it's been hard to play. for me. I was gonna, yeah, <laughs> it's an excuse. To, all right, good. It's been hard for me uh, as I walk through that room to to assign a genre to much of what I'm seeing because so much of it is mixed. Yeah. In its we watched somebody last night who started with the Battle of Stalingrad and ended with the zombie apocalypse on the same board. Um, so I have no doubt. <laughs> it is, it's an amazing mashup uh, within the community, like you said, an excuse to play. That's, that's really all it is. It, that's, and it's fantastic, and, and it's great that you've been able to uh, be such a part of creating the game, the pieces, the paint jobs. That's really fantastic. What is your, what within that scope, Mm -hmm. Which is uh, kind of grand when you stop and think about it. If you haven't thought about it, don't do it on camera because it'll okay. freak you out. Probably. But it's pretty grand. What's your favorite part? What do you enjoy the most? Uh, getting together with people who enjoy the same things mm -hmm. is probably the best part. Coming to these shows for that very thing. How long have you been coming to gaming conventions um, and shows and things? I started this business in 2007 and have wow. been pretty consistent since then. But there's guys 30 years plus. So I'm a relative new we, we talked to a, a game designer earlier who started designing games 35, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, got lucky and did one professionally and then has done it ever since. And yep. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand that it is, uh, for you guys out there on YouTube, uh, obviously not watching this live, by the time you watch it, uh, today is Saturday. Uh, line. Line, what's the date? 30th. The, the 30th of April, and it is International Tabletop Gaming Day. So we couldn't pick a better time to be at this convention. I only know that because someone in the gaming room told us that. <laughs> uh, I didn't so, even. hashtag International Tabletop Gaming Day, which will burn up like all of your characters on Twitter. But uh, check it out, man. People are playing games all over the country at home uh, and, and at these conventions all over. And uh, we are fortunate to be at the 20th anniversary convention of the his Historical Miniature Games Society hanging with Ken Cliff. Uh, so we like to, to let people know, uh, first of all, where can we find your materials? I mean, you're making your own materials, you're making your own gameplay, mm -hmm. you're painting for folks, uh, it's a business. Where can people find you? Are you on the web? Oh, definitely. Oh, uh, thank goodness, because we're only on the web. So if you, we yeah, just, that would be that would detrimental. Be, yeah. yeah, that wouldn't help. And so where are you at? How do we find the you? The easiest URL is armyinabox.com. Armyinabox.com. Mm -hmm. Very good site. Uh, you had me at Army. I'm an old adventure uh, man. Okay. Uh, so armyinabox.com. It'll be down in the description, folks. Click on that. Check out All the King's Men. The game pieces, the, the gameplay, um, and, uh, and make sure you check back with that. But we want your customers, that's all of those guys out there, yeah. we want them to know you a little bit, okay? Gamers are geeks, man. We're super geeks. And geek is chic in the, in the new millennium. Okay. And there's a lot going on in the geekdom sure going is. on right now. Yeah. Uh, games are getting bigger. Comics are getting bigger. Movies are never been bigger absolutely uh so we like you to weigh in on some of the uh the truly important cultural the issues debates of the day, of the day. Yeah. and so we want to know man next week is coming fast it's time for a civil war oh yeah team cap team iron man mm, captain america captain america yeah outstanding all right it's been a month-long battle at the box office batman or superman Batman. Batman. Yeah. Okay. You know, you very rarely get that. Team Cap really? and Batman. Oh, okay. I don't know why. It's, hmm. I think it's that wholesomeness thing. Usually our, our Team Cap guys come down on, on Soup's team. And, uh -huh. uh, but, uh, and our, of course, our billionaire builders always come down. They're Batman and, they're, and they're yeah. uh, Iron Man, of course. Um, so the literally fantastical age-old rivalry of the new millennium. I don't know how those things fit together. Okay. I, I, I just created the oxymoronic rivalry. 17 year old millennium. That's right, 17 year old millennium. Uh, Gollum or Dobby? Who the hell is Dobby? <laughs> Outstanding. No, uh, Harry Potter. Uh, oh. He was the annoying Potter. little elf in Harry Potter. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. 
But that was perfect because okay. I'm a Gollum guy too. Gollum is, you know, there's nothing like the precious. Uh, so, what what is your favorite part of, of, of these conventions? Uh, well, like I say, getting together with friends. Mm -hmm. um, Have you met a lot of new people? Oh, absolutely. In, in gaming every day. Every, every day. day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so. The, uh, they're giving me this, they, they give me all kinds of cues back there and, uh, and tell me that my, my time is running short. But it was really a pleasure to talk to you, Ken, and uh, your game setup in there is amazing. We can't wait to go in and get some shots and That'd to actually see the play because it's just cool. Yeah. I, I got to work all weekend in a place where they played games all weekend. That's fantastic. That's what we do for And there's some amazing stuff in there. There's a guy with a, a, an Enterprise layout. Oh, yeah. That, and uh, yeah, the Star Wars on, on this mm -hmm. end. Like I said, we had Stalingrad and zombies. Yep. Where do you get that? That's, All that's, imagination. Uh, I, I don't speak Russian. I wonder what the Walking Dead in Russian sounds like, because that's just got to be wild. Uh, we got to wrap it up here, folks. We want to send our special thanks, as always, to Something Unique Magazine. Our partners over there are fantastic at sharing these videos all over the World Wide Web. Books, Chocolate, and Wine, great place on social media, Facebook. Uh, to share our videos, the Florida Book News, a blog and Facebook presence that, that they share our videos all over the place and help our creators get their word out. Uh, Authors for Authors, the Wordfire Press team, fantastic creators in their own right, wonderful marketers and great partners. I'm GW Pomacher. We've been hanging with uh, Ken Cliff. Mm -hmm. I almost did that backwards. I don't know why okay. I almost did that. We've been hanging with Ken Cliff, the proprietor and a gamer with All the King's Men. Uh, you can check that out at armyinabox.com. Look for it in the description. Remember, folks, subscribe here, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.